Tuesday. It is KJM and it's Temptation Tuesday. Um, I know we're all still reeling off of the uh, Insecure finale on Sunday. Shout out to the whole cast um, and team, writers, producers for the show Insecure on HBO starring Issa Rae. Um, this whole season has been triggering for most of us. It's dealt with relationships, friendships, family. It's dealt with a whole host of things. And the finale nearly took me out. It was so deep and it was so good. And it was so needed during such a depressing time. Like, most of us are having a hard time just getting out of bed right now. And so really shout out to all of them for really writing, producing, uh, directing and acting a beautiful body of art that we from all over the world can watch and enjoy um, while it seems like the world is on fire. So thank you guys for that. So there's a lot I could talk about from this season but I'm just going to tackle a portion of the finale and hopefully by now you watched it and if you didn't watch it it's Tuesday that shit aired on Sunday it's on demand. You could have watched it on your HBO Go app I don't even feel sorry for you, okay? So I'm not even putting up spoiler alerts. You, you just gotta get with the program. Um, I wanna just tap in on the Condola Lawrence pregnancy thing, right? And I had this conversation yesterday with my brother and my sister because I was a little thrown for a loop and I was like, I know people are not gonna agree with me on this topic all the way, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep it as real as I can. So here's the thing, this goes out to both men and women, but I'm a woman, so I can only say things from like my point of view and how I see it and what I've been doing or whatever. This whole segment of today's Temptation Tuesday is ignorant as fuck because it's really titled, How Not to Pop the Fuck Up Pregnant. After the age 25, I would say, I'm a little surprised when people say they pop up pregnant and they don't know how they got pregnant. Most of us completed high school. Biology is part of most U.S. I think it's really part of all of U.S.'s um, curriculum, right? So if you took biology 101, you should know some basic things about the sperm and the egg. But my, my biggest thing about it is I've always been, I've always known most of my life that I want to... Um, that I don't want to, I didn't want to biologically have children. And I felt strongly about this, like since I was probably in the single digits, you know? Um, and even as I got into my thirties, I, I, like I had one exception and I was thinking maybe it's cause I'm in my thirties now, I'm changing my mind. But when I wasn't dating my one exception and I was dating other people, um, the well had dried up. I didn't feel the same way. So I have one person that I would have children with if he had asked for some kids, but the S factors never asked for none. So we don't have none. Okay. I want to know how in 2020 are people still popping up pregnant and surprised when the EPT says there's a baby on board and why the fuck are people still doing the pullout method with people they don't even really care about? Condola, Lawrence, Y'all got any answers for me? Because here's the thing. When Lauren says, I thought we were being careful, we all know, um, with exception of a couple scenes over the last four seasons, you don't see a lot of condom use um, on Insecure and actually in a lot of shows. You actually don't hear a lot about um, protection. But we do know when Issa was messing with TSA Bay, at one point the condom got lost somewhere in her vagina and um she she had to go looking for it so we know they were using protection but other than that um pretty sure in the third season with nathan and Issa on the ferris wheel ferris wheel that shit was romantic and shit but that shit i ain't seen no condom wrappers okay just saw them their beautiful black skin the ferris wheel the night air and they was fucking that's what it was so here's the thing I think I'm one of the very few people I know, even now, that is so afraid of having a trifling ass baby daddy. Let me tell you how afraid I am, okay? I don't really believe in go in being raw dog unless it's somebody you really, 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 really care about. Because 
since I've never wanted to biologically have children, I want to, if I end up in that situation, I want to at least be able to look at my child and say, damn, I was really, I loved your father. I was really feeling your father. Like no matter what happened and that's how you got here. Apparently I'm in the minority and everybody is still all in it for the feels. Didn't Magic Johnson tell y'all that the feels could get y'all in a lot of trouble? I, I'm, I'm really confused. So I'm going to be very candid and graphic. It is what it is. In my entire time of dating and having sex or whatever, I've really only experienced the raw dog thing with four partners. Two I loved and they were the only two people that it was, it was intentionally happening. We discussed it, we talked about it. It was an intentional thing. And that's Julio and the X Factor. Two other people, um, which would have been Crazy and then Mr. Toss Salad, um, they took the condom off. So for crazy, I was still very new at sex when he and I met when um, I was in college. So I don't think I fully understood that if somebody does that, if someone takes off the condom during sex, that's probably someone you should never, ever, 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 ever let touch you again. I don't think I really fully grasped that. When it happened again with Mr. Toss Salad, I think I was in my early 30s, but I was in a bad fucking place like I was in a bad place I had split up from the x-factor I was in a bad fucking place um I stayed with Mr. Toss Salad for a couple of weeks he had been someone that had been chasing me since college and I was in a really bad place and so when he did that I felt very violated but I also felt like he's really trying to make this work because everything outside of the relationship like he's spoiling me like it got to a point where I probably didn't have to wipe my own ass after shitting when I was dating him because he would be there and he would do whatever it is, you know, whatever. The wine and the dining, whatever. But I soon learned that, you know, people who are whining and dining and they're you're waking up with flowers at the end of the bed or breakfast or whatever, um, you know, they're expecting something and they're expecting something quite soon. But I was in such a bad place. Like I held out for a bit and I was in such a bad place in um, ultimately stayed in that situation a little bit longer than I should. I, it was only for a few short months because um, I can only date ugly men for like a short amount, you know, short amount of time. When I say ugly, I mean ugly on the inside and outside um, because some people, you just find out they got some really ugly ways, but that's neither here nor there. So um, that was pretty short lived with Mr. Toss Salad, but it was a violation, but I was in a place where I was in so much pain. It was a good thing that I'm a say no to drugs. I barely drink since I got out of college um, type of person, or I probably would have been on some, some shit, right? So I wasn't in a good place. And then when I walked away from all that, I'm like, wow, that was such a huge violation. It just shouldn't have happened. But I knew in both situations with Crazy and Mr. Toss Salad, uh, with Crazy, I was not on birth control yet. Uh, with Mr. Toss Salad, I was, and thank God the birth control worked, but I am pro-choice. And even though I'm pro-choice, I I don't think I can mentally ever have an abortion. But in both of those, like, or handle, mentally handling having an abortion, but in both of those situations, I knew that if I ever turned up pregnant, um, I had one of two choices. Either I'm going to the clinic and I'm getting rid of this um, baby, or um, I'm gonna have my sister roll me down the steps and just hope that like I don't break my neck but it's just so that it'll be like a miscarriage right not my brother because my brother junior he's all about babies he ain't gonna roll me down the steps he's not die hard like that but I would have definitely told my sister look just put me at the top of the steps and just let let me go just give me a little love tap and we'll get this all situated I know that sounds crazy but that's where I was at because as a woman that's never really wanted to have children, I always thought of the possibility that it could still happen. And if it could still happen, I only need it to happen with somebody I actually really give a fuck about. Because guess what? A lot of y'all's children look just like they daddy. Yeah, yeah. So I need it to be that it's somebody that I once loved because now I got to look back at his face. Junior looked just like him. What in the fucks am I going to do about that? You understand what I'm saying? What am I going to do about that? So no, I don't want his daddy to have a funny looking head. Okay? 
I don't want his dad to be some random dude. Or I don't want his dad to be some dude I had to close my eyes really tight and make the room super clap on dark just to be able to have sex with him. I want his daddy to be someone that even if it didn't work out, I could say, yo, once upon a time, I really rode with this person. Like I was ride or die for this person. And so I only have two people like that, Julio and the X Factor. And honestly, when kids came up with Julio, we met when I was 15 and he was 16, I had already told him it was a no-go. But all the years we had gone back and forth, back and forth dating, and I was, you know, increasing my education and moving for, for school and everything, like, I really said, like, that's been the only person I hardcore care about up until I met the X Factor. So I was like, if he stays down with me, with everything that I'm going through, if he holds me down, then I will deliver what he's been asking for. And he didn't hold me down. You know, my first year in North Carolina, my first year in graduate school, um, at the end of it, Julio gave me an ultimatum. It was him or my education, and um, I chose my education. And I still think that was the right thing to do um, for me. And, I, and this is why I don't believe in giving people ultimatum, period, whether it's a man or a woman. People think because you're a woman, when you get that kind of ultimatum, you'll be like, oh my God, I'm going to die alone. I'm not going to have a family. I really looked at him and was just like, and I, I cried. We've been together since we were teenagers on and off. I was like, this is some real fucked up shit. Um, but at the same time, I wanted him to be happy. And he really wanted a family and he really wanted kids. And guess what? It's like 13 years later and the motherfucker still don't have me either. Should have stayed down, Julio. Should have stayed down. But neither here nor there. Let's go back to the pop-up pregnant thing. So one thing crazy taught me when I was in college is that some men will try to trap, you know, beautiful, intelligent young women that they know are going places in life. Crazy knew I was going places in life, okay? Because I was smart. And... He at the time, well, we won't even talk about what his occupation was, but he wasn't even going to Penn State at the time. You know, he was just a townie. And I learned a lot from him. I definitely did. And one of the things that I learned was you got to be ahead of these dudes, okay? Because it's your reproductive system. And so, you know, we did the pull-out method. I don't even know. I think it was like, maybe eight or nine months before I started to get worried if that shit was going to continue to work. And I had to really think, is this someone I want to be my baby's father? Um, I definitely know one thing about him. He wouldn't have left me pregnant. It's more like he would have been behind me. I'd have been on my third husband and he would have still been behind me and be like, but we got these kids, right? And I just felt like, so I knew at some point, I feel like at some point him and Julio my first year of graduate school, Julio was definitely trying because we were just using birth control and it worked. He was so mad that it worked, but it worked. Um, so if taken effectively, birth control is about 98 to 99%. And I'm, I take the pill and let me tell you something, that shit could roll in the toilet. I would still pop it out. And I know I'm going to be sick because shit was in the toilet, but I won't be sick because I'm pregnant. And that's how I felt about it. So, um, you know, Crazy really taught me that if you're not careful, dudes will poke holes in condoms, they will take the condom off during the sex, and it could be with the intention just for the feels, or it could be within the intention to make sure that you are fucking pregnant. So um, once I really was put on to what he was doing, I decided to secretly get on the pill. And let me tell you how crazy this motherfucker was. Like, he noticed things about my body, that my breasts, they had always been big. I've pretty much been a D since I was maybe like 16 or 17 or something. But he had noticed that they were getting more fuller and he couldn't figure it out because I had hid the pills. He couldn't figure it out and he didn't know what was going on. But I was like, you know what? He is the bomb.com in bed but he is not going to be my baby's father. So this is how we're gonna do it. So I popped my pill and to this day, I'm on the same pill. You know, I think I took a break when I got done with graduate school for about a year and a half off the pill. And during that time period, I, um, I met the X Factor. And then we talked about it. And even though we were using condoms, we talked about it that we both felt better if I got back on the pill. So I did. So we are two, for the most part, we are a two contraception type of people. We want the backup to the backup to the backup to the backup because we 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 enjoy each other. We just want to enjoy each other without that pressure. Plus he was super duper young when I started dating him and I didn't want it to be one of those things like he was 20 and I was 29. 
don't judge me. You can't help who you fall in love with. But I wanted him to have a lot of life experiences. I didn't want him to be like 22 with like five kids. You know what I mean? Because if I could, I, I probably, because he was my exception. And I knew he was my exception before I even slept with him, which is weird. Um, and I, I don't know. As much as he can get on my nerves sometimes, I think a lot of it is he has some traits um, where he's kind. He's definitely a team player. He's very forgiving, which is great because I hold grudges. Um, there's been times that he's made the effort to do things or he'll notice how I do things and he'll try to do them that way too. I just saw things in him that was a little bit different. Um, I did not have anybody I've ever dated and I never felt like he was really trying to control me. I always felt like I had a lot of freedom in the way how I how I feel about him and the way how we live our lives. I mean, that freedom comes with a price, but that's not really what this video is about, right? So, you know, for all the times, even when you read my blogs and they were about Phoenix, you know, my side piece on and off for like 10 years, Phoenix and I, I always use two type, two protections with Phoenix, birth control and condoms, because I'm just there for the kinky sex. I'm not there for him to be my baby's daddy. And so ladies, I want y'all to keep this in mind that sometimes like, you go into a situation, maybe everybody's thinking about the feels, but I'm gonna tell you what my daddy told me when I was little, sex, when it's happening, it really needs to be your choice because when those consequences come, women do pay often more, men just disappear. You know what I mean? And I don't want a trashy ass baby dad, I don't. And one thing I knew about Julio's family was I knew that even if I couldn't stand his face or even if he didn't show up, which I don't believe that he wouldn't because he wanted children so badly. I just think he probably would have used those children against me. I knew that his family takes care of their own. Both his family and my family have raised children that, um, you know, were either abandoned or they needed someone or they were coming out of an abusive home or something. So I knew that our families were similar in that retrospect that if I had if I had a child by him, um, my mother-in-law that I could not stand would still show up for my child, even if she can't stand me. I would have had to just put little little um, Junior, you know, on the corner and told her she could come get him and I'd watch her pick him up um, just so I wouldn't have to talk to her. Um, so I knew that much about him. And I understand sometimes you can get bait and switch. A guy can show you one side of himself and he really turns out to not be that person. I get that. I get that. So if you love someone and it went south and you're a single mom now, I, I get that. You know what I mean? I understand that. But I feel like, like Visa and MasterCard, we cannot be leaving our homes without thinking about our reproductive systems because at the end of the day, it's our body, our choice. That brings me to Lawrence. So I felt kind of bad for Lawrence, but then he's over there like, why, why, Candola, why are you gonna keep the baby? We, I think we found out in season three that Candola was divorced and that they, she had also had an abortion, I think somewhere, I think in her marriage, okay? Um, and that she didn't handle it well. It wasn't something that she felt great about. So when she showed up in this finale talking about she was pregnant, I already knew right away she was gonna keep it. I already knew she's a successful, beautiful black woman um, and she had already been through something. So she already knows what it's like to be on the other side of it. And for anybody that doesn't know, if ab abortion is not an easy way out. I have a lot of friends that have gone crazy on the anniversary of it, um, you know, that have regrets, have emotional stress from it. It, it's whether you keep your baby or not it's a lifelong choice and so I hate when people think that it's this easy thing because I've, I've for all the people I've known that have experienced it it was never easy it's trauma you know what I mean you it's trauma that you live with but you make the very best decision that you can and my thing was I said I do not want to be pregnant for trash especially random trash so I really and trash is not a socioeconomic thing honey you can have money and be trash okay there's a lot of people in our government right now that are straight up trash and they got money. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But why are we going into these situations doing the pull out method? Why are we going into these situations not having two types of protection? Why are we going into the situation at least not having a condom? And let me tell you something, I also recommend that women bring their own condoms. 
Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not necessarily talking about the female condom because that never took off and became really popular for women. But I'm talking about I would be buying my magnums when the year and a half that I was off of birth control. I always had condoms in my bag. And I understand that some people want to pretend that they're a saint and they're not having sex. But let's, let's be honest, we're all having sex, right? We're all doing it. You know, um, and thanks to all my years with the nuns, I also practiced celibacy. Because after Julio broke up with me at the end of my first year of graduate school with that terrible ultimatum, I didn't want a man to touch me for about another year and change. I just decided that that's, that's what it was. I was going to practice celibacy. But I still stayed on my pill because I believe penis falls out the sky just like rain. And what happens when it rains and you don't have an umbrella? You're going to get drenched. Yes, sis, you're going to get drenched. So why? Why are people popping up pregnant? And if you pop up pregnant, I'll give you one baby. One baby that maybe you didn't think it could happen. But after that, there's no really popping up pregnant. You already know what the sperm and the egg do. You already know that the pullout method is not 100% effective. You also know condoms can break. And for those of you that don't know, if you're messing with a random, you really need to get that water test at the condom. You know, you pour a little bit of water into the used condom at the end of it. And just make sure that there's no leaks, that there's no holes. Because sometimes rips are large. I, you know, I, sometimes rips are large. I've had, I think I've had it ripped largely one time with Julio and one time with Phoenix. Like, Ech! and I think one time with the X Factor, but he noticed it. He noticed it. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that was April 2011. He noticed it because he had done the water test on it or whatever. Why don't people notice shit? Why? It's your reproductive system. I just, I may end up with a deadbeat baby dad one day, but I will say that I was a little shucking and jiving and like doing everything I could do and walking with my pill, walking with my condoms, got my umbrella ready. Like I'm trying everything that I could try. And I know that's not ignorant as fuck, but nothing is perfect and you can't plan everything. But for a person like myself that didn't really think that motherhood is something that she's gonna wanna do. I had to be smarter than these dudes. You understand? And it's not all of them. I felt like maybe I've dated maybe two or three the most that was definitely trying to trap me, but it's not all of them. And then for the Lawrences in the world, you gotta understand it's our body, our choice. So when you was going all up in there for the feels, you gotta understand, you gotta feel condola on she gets to decide whether she chooses her baby or not whether she has her baby or not that's just not gonna be on you what should have been on you was your condom when you were going in for the feels for a woman you just kind of liked not even someone you deeply cared about use a hot ghetto mess lawrence yeah that's what you are but i felt it for you because now you know who you want your lifelong partner to be and that's not who you're having a baby with that's a mess. That is a mess. And that is going to be tough for all parties involved. But we all need to focus less on the feels. And I'm all down for the kinky stuff. But you know you can do the kinky stuff with lots of different types of protection. Yeah, your kink doesn't go away because there's no condom or no birth control or whatever. No, no, your kink is still there. As a matter of fact, you got to get even more creative with your kink. You understand what I'm saying? But protect your reproductive systems. This is how guys end up with some trifling ass baby moms, how women end up with some trifling ass baby dads. And I understand if you were duped, if it was the bait and switch, but I really think over the age of 25, nobody should be popping up pregnant. I just, I mean, what is, I mean, what happened? How, how did it happen here? Did you miss biology 101? I'm really confused. And if you went to college, uh, science was part of that, that program too for your gen eds. So I'm really confused. Was you not paying attention to those lab experiments? What was happening there? Yes, I don't believe in the pop-up pregnant. So this is my thing. You can make it into your thirties, not pregnant by just simply always considering your reproductive system before you leave your home or when you come home. And Really ask yourself, do you want your baby to have an odd head? Do you want your baby to look like a complete stranger? Some people really want to be moms and it doesn't matter who the father is. Shout out to you guys. That is not me. Okay? It matters because 
I'm going to be looking back on Junior's little face and he's going to look like his daddy most likely because most babies do. And then what am I going to do? You understand what I'm saying? When I'm like, I hate that motherfucker. Or I barely know that motherfucker. But look, it's his whole face right there. And to be honest, I feel like I need some sort of guarantee um, that my children will come out looking like me if I decide to have kids. You know what I mean? I don't know. Adding the reproductive thing is crazy. I know not everyone has sex thinking about children. And I get that. Um, but I always have to think about it because I did a lot of schooling. Um, I have a couple degrees and to get that far as a woman, you really have to consider your reproductive system. If you want it to be a fairly easy road, there's a lot of women who do it who are mothers or um, they were second careers and they still achieved what they wanted to. Sis, I'm not stopping what your hustle is, but I, if I could do some things a little bit easier, I'm going to try. So ladies and gentlemen, like, please consider your reproductive systems and the fact that a child will pay for a lot of the mistakes that you make. And let's not all be in it for the feels, okay? You can have your one night stands. You can have your fun. Just be safe about it. No one's judging you. I'm not judging you. I don't care what you do, but be safe about it. And if you're not safe about it, please don't pretend that you are surprised that y'all popped up pregnant, okay? It's not like you popping popcorn. Like, why are y'all surprised? Why is Condola and Lauren surprised? The pullout only works for so long. You can Google that and see what the statistics on it. And I was lucky to dodge that bullet once. And I told myself I never want to be in that position again. You don't got to do things the way I got that I'm doing it. I'm not saying that. But I know I have a lot of young women on my timeline. And I just want to give them some options. Um, don't feel bad that you want to have sex. Go out and do you. But just be safe about it. Because... Then you're in that position where you have to make all these decisions. And no matter what decision you make, keep your baby or not, it's a tough ass decision. And it's a lifelong decision. You know what I mean? Um, so yes, you can be old as fuck and avoid these situations. You just gotta be ahead of these dudes for real. And as far as the dudes, y'all get your shit together. There's so many deadbeat dads out here. You know, everybody busting in everything, but people don't wanna take care of stuff. And if you know you was busting in that, then you better be ready to pay for that child and take care of that child. Nobody got time for your weak ass game. You feel me? So it's 2020. It shouldn't be that easy for people to trap you. It shouldn't be that easy for you to pop a pregnant, especially if you're over, I'd say the age of 25. You're like too grown now. You understand what I'm saying? And if you even do make a mistake, just lay in your shit like a grown woman or a grown man and say, this is what I did. This Let's try to make the best out of this situation. Um, let's do what's best for us and what's best for this child. That's all I'm trying to say. So really think about Condola and Lawrence the next time you want to randomly hook up with somebody and just realize that like some people are trying to trap you. And there are men out there that do try to trap women. I don't know why some women don't realize this, but it is a thing. So you got to stay one step ahead of these hoes. Yeah, these male hoes. You got to stay a step ahead of them. Um, and there's no guarantees when you have children what your child's father will be like. I've always heard of, um, a woman say that, you know, you don't really know a man until you have a child for him. Um, I think for me, like, there's one person that's my exception. And it's, I don't think it's really going to be something that we're going to be doing. But if it's not my exception, I can always move on and love other people. But not everybody's meant to be my baby daddy. I'm pretty particular about that. You understand what I'm saying? So I just want you guys to get more particular about that. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. It's KJM. It's Temptation Tuesday. I don't have any makeup on and I'm in my living room just chilling like a mug. Shout out, shout out again to the entire cast, directors, writers, actors of Insecure. One love. Let me let let me know what you guys thought about this video. I'm trying to keep it under 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, pop up pregnant. I need men and women. I need everybody to get themselves together. Okay, don't be slipping and sliding. The feels. Well, your hand feel good too. Use that. Okay, it's coronavirus times. Use that. Okay, touch yourself. I'm out.